Now I know iFootage has been known for their amazing attachments and not too long ago they launched their anglerfish lights which were amazing and now they've just dropped the iFootage projector. Welcome back to the channel. iFootage has just dropped their brand new projector and I'm gonna show you as much as I can about this projector and try and keep this quite simple. Projectors aren't really something new but when they're designed correctly, they work very well. Often projectors in the industry are referred to as optical snoots. So let's check it out. Starting off in the box. Now I'm a sucker for a good case. Now the Anglerfish lights did come with a case but the case wasn't anything like this one with a projector. It's a very premium case, it feels good, feels solid, and iFootage has thought something through that I'll get to in a sec. The projector set comes with a 40 degree lens and there is a 20 degree optional lens you can buy as well. Now when you open the case for the first time you'll see that the projector lens is in one corner, however once it's all assembled together it fits back in the case like that. Now our footage has kind of thought this through, so if you do buy the 20 degree lens, you can actually keep the 20 degree lens in the bag and the 40 degree lens can actually stay on the projector itself without you having to worry about carrying around another projector lens. Now in the kit that I have, it does come with the iris ring. It also comes with 20 different gobos or patterns if you want to call them. From what I understand and in the AV industry, these are referred to as gobos essentially a piece of metal that has been stenciled out to create a pattern on the wall like that pattern over there no it is the middle of the night and there is no sun coming through bleeding on that wall to give you that kind of morning sunrise through the blinds also it did come with a few paper filters as they refer to if you're in the photography industry you'd know these as gels it's kind of like a bit of a plastic gel that you do put over the front features now this is a completely physical device, there is no digital aspect to it, but to make this quite simple, it is a Bowens mount. So if you have any form of light, cob, LED, probably a strobe if you really had to, you could mount this to almost any light that you own. Now I do advise you to use a lot stronger lights when you are using a gel or one of the gobos and the patterns. A lot of the light does get diminished when traveling through something like an optical snoot. So it is better to have one of your stronger lights running through that. So the goal would not be to put a 60 watt light through that onto your background and still gel your background with RGB lights, which I'll get to in a sec. Now, if you are a user of the Anglerfish lights and I have the SL1 130 BNA over here, which is actually kind of like this mini Bowens mount, you can get a Bowens adapter which takes your Anglerfish light to a normal Bowens mount. And what is pretty cool about this is when it is attached to the front, it has its own little mounting stand for the top of your light stand, which actually offsets the weight of the projector so it's not too front heavy and doesn't kind of fall forward all the time. It also has built-in geometric light effects, which is what some of us refer to as the blades that you would push in, and that allows you to kind of shape the circular light that would normally come out of there. Then just in front of that, you can insert the iris ring and that allows you to adjust the size of the circle that is projected out. If you remove that iris ring, you can place in your gobo into the provided clip and that would drop in there and essentially shine the pattern out like it has here on the wall. Also, the front part of it where the lens actually slides in, whether you've got the 40 or 20 degree lens, you can actually slide that in and out and that would actually adjust the focus of the pattern so if you do want it to be really sharp in the background, you can, but if the background's really close to you and you actually wanna blur out that pattern, you can do that too. Now, because the kit that I have has a few different gels with it, the gel thing is actually being placed right in the front. So you would remove the screw little clamp, you would slide in the placeholder with the gel, and because this placeholder is situated in the front of the entire projector, it receives a lot less heat than if it was closer to the cob of your actual light. Now, if you've ever worked with gels in the past, you'd know that long-term use of gels kind of burns them out and they start to become transparent and the colors become less saturated. But I thought it just placed it right near the front so it doesn't get that much heat and most of the heat is dissipated before it gets to the front 
So it's kind of a win-win and your gels are gonna last a little bit longer. And on that note about the heat, this design allows massive heat dissipation, if that is the correct word. If you've ever used an optical snoop before, you'll know that the heat is usually a major factor and it builds up a lot of heat. You cannot even touch these things sometimes. So the heat design over here allows the majority of the heat to escape before it even gets to some of the gobers. And although they might be warm, it's not that it's impossible to touch like some optical snoots. Now, when it comes to real world use, the options and the possibilities when using an optical snoot or a projector are endless. And in true fashion on the channel, we try to give you a few different scenarios. First, the model shoot. Now here we set up a shot using one of the gobos on Michelle's face. We gelled the background using an RGB light and the gobo was projected straight onto Michelle's face. This kind of gives you this weird artistic look and it's something to play around with and it is quite fun. Then we put a gobo on the background and we lit Michelle with the 60 centimeter eye footage softbox and the softbox was on the SL1 130 BNA. Now the reason that we use the SL1 130 BNA I'm just gonna call it the iFootage light for now because all the iFootage lights are pretty much part of this insanely accurate color spectrum. And the reason we've used this on Michelle's face is so that we can get the correct color rendition of the skin tone. Let me explain. On most modern day cob lights, you can adjust the Kelvin temperature from warm to cold, whatever it may be. However, 5,600 Kelvin is supposed to be where the sun sits providing you the perfect color rendition of skin tone. Now what iFootage has done is, just because one light might say 5,600 Kelvin is correct, it might be off with the CRI and different color measurements. But iFootage has mastered the art of delivering what they call sunlight spectrum. Basically what iFootage is saying is they have spent more time than anyone else to try and deliver the perfect colors. So if you are lighting up someone's face, you get that correct skin tone that every photographer and videographer is looking for. Not to mention all of this effort has been packed into a 130 watt light by color that is smaller than an iPhone 15, which is quite impressive. Now, if you look at these shots with Michelle, you'll see that she has got a little bit of a tanned redder skin, but Michelle has been in the sun quite a bit at the moment in South Africa. It is summer. We've just had December, which is our holiday season. So she is slightly tanned and that is why her skin tone is actually 100% correct to what you are seeing right now. The product shot. Now here we did two different products. First up, we had the 130 BNA on a softbox, but we shot it through a reflector to really soften the lights on the glass bottle. The projector was put in the 260 watt light that we have delivering a palm tree kind of background using the one gobo. And we had RGB colors on the background. Now this gives you a very insanely photoshopped looking background, but it's all in camera. So for video, this works amazing. Little tip on how to get this RGB in the background. Your gobo light delivering the pattern needs to be a lot brighter than your RGBs. Otherwise your RGBs would essentially wash out the pattern. Then we put up a plain circle with no gobos in, so just the projector lens. And we put the beautiful Jun Crane 4 with an RX lens on, which looks like a beastly setup. And just kind of made it pop and gave it this very dark kind of moody look to kind of illustrate the product as it is. Very, very strong, impactful. Then we took the 5,600 Kelvin range and we dropped it down to 3,000 Kelvin to give a bit of a warmer vibe. Threw in a window pane looking gobo to give you this effect. And once we were done with that, we threw on a red gel on the front to give it this effect. Now, who is this for? Firstly, this projector kit is $349. The additional iris ring kit is $59, and I will be dropping this in the description below so you can kind of see, and I'll add links over there to take you to where you wanna see exactly how you can have your kit. But this is for photographers or creators or videographers that are working in a studio environment. But if you're a photographer that's working with products or models, you generally, confronted with a very boring background and you've tried different paper, different colors, different gels. This changes the game quite considerably. Also, because it is a constant and this isn't 
a type of Photoshop in your background. If you are filming content creation, the short 15, 20 second reels for clients, this is amazing. Once you've ever worked with a projector, you'll quickly realize that it's something that you cannot go without in your kit and you feel less creative when you don't have one. Even though you may not use it on every single shoot, just knowing that it is there to spice it up makes it worthwhile. Now iFootage did send this out to it, but iFootage is not paying us. In actual fact, when iFootage reached out to us, Michelle and I were super excited because we have been wanting to do something on a projector kit for a while. We have a projector kit, which I absolutely hate. Despise, probably a better word. That has actually melted one of my lights due to lack of heat dissipation and actually melted the cob. So this video and review really came from a creative process and the passion to create something to show you guys what you can do with something like this. That's it from me. If you guys enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment below, and hopefully I can answer those questions for you wherever you are in the world. Have a good day, good evening, good night, goodbye. How sick. RGB tube light and teal. These are normal bulbs, all yellow bulbs. Projector, which is actually peeking through there. You can actually see the tip of it over there. And then I have another RGB light outside of that door, giving you that teal kind of look. Quite proud of this little setup. What do you guys think? Anyway, 